Welcome to our lockdown tour of Adazcat 1295. Today, we're lucky enough to have designer Darren Newton, Mr. Dazcat himself, giving you a guided tour of Slinky Malinky. Matt Baker, Dazcat build team member and regular sailing crew, will also talk you through some of the special features of this exceptional catamaran. Dazcats are handmade, built in Cornwall at the Multi-Hull Centre, established in 1968 and thought to be Europe's oldest specialist multi-hull boatyard. So we're going to give you a very quick tour today um, in these times of, uh, you know, crazy times we're in. So we thought we'd give you a quick show. Um, so you can see the boat here. Basically looking at the foredeck there, we've got our carbon bow sprit uh, with our classic Dascat V striker. We can set uh, an A2 or A3 spinnaker or a Code Zero reacher on this. Uh, we also have a, a hank-on jib. Basically, we don't really recommend the furlers because furlers tend to let go. Um, this is a really nice, lighter, stronger, better upwind scenario. One of the performance features of a Daz Cat are these very strong carbon fibre dagger boards. And that basically gets you upwind with a handsome rig. I think this is a major plus point that loads of boats just don't oh. have. This is the uh, easy access onto the boat. We've got a nice little carbon flagpole. We can just step aboard very nice and easily. Pull all the steps up. We've got our running back stays. Steps down into our cockpit. So other features of the cockpit here is we've got our nice draft storage. And it's accessible from above and from below. And then the, uh, the dinghy hangs on the back, which can be easily uh, brought back up. One of the features we do have a step there. So it's easy to jump over to the back beam to guide the dinghy up. And then this also prevents any waves from hooking up on the on the dinghy on the back when it gets rough. So paging system, traveller system, all run across to the, the helm station. So you can sit here, you've got your traveller control nice and close to you, you push in the boat, you can hold on to it. Standing up we have uh, all the deck controls, the halyards, self-tacking jib. Uh, yeah, she's it's, um, it's a beautifully easy boat to sail. Um, yeah, it's very easy to sail these things um, sort of two-handed, and um, yeah, even even single-handed, you can short tack one of these up a river quite quite happily on your own. You've got your, the the traveller just behind you here at the wheel. You've got your your jib sheet just here, uh, and it's uh, it's a self-tacking jib, so you literally short tack and you can just turn the wheel and walk over the other side. And uh, once you've got both dagger balls down, you just truck and pull that wind quite happily on your own. So now we've got a single, single powered winch, and you've basically got the, the two sort of heaviest. So you've got the sort of the, the, the jib and the, the main halyard um, are, are led to the powered winch. So pulling the main up on your own is very, very easy. And because it's on a track with cars, uh, fairly friction free, uh, it's quite nicely. And you've also got all your other sail control, all your reef lines, uh, spinnaker halyards, switcher halyards, reef lines. Uh, pretty much everything is laid back. So it's it's an immensely easy boat to sail, short-handed. And the main sail's in a, in a stack pack. So when you let your halyard go, it literally just kind of puts itself to bed, and then all you've got to do is zip the bag up. One of the other special features on this boat is the carbon mast. Um, it's something we've developed at Baltic Marine, but it's uh, quite different. non-rotating. Uh, we've played with rotating masts over the years and although there are some advantages to them, uh, we are advocates of the fixed mast. I think, I think one of the other great benefits of, of this rig is it vastly reduces the, the number of potential failure points as well. Um, if you've got um, a set of diamonds or even two sets normally on, on, on a mast this size then um, 
and all the rigging's discontinuous, then you know that's probably 30 points of failure that will take out your rig. Whereas this is probably you know you're down to 10, 10, 10 potential failure points. Absolutely, and one of the nice things about that with the synthetic rigging is you can actually take a, a spare set if you were long distance cruising and you're out for periods of time. Um, it's, it's incredibly light. Probably the standing rigging on this weighs. Five, 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 ten kilos. Yeah. yeah. So that forward slat lower is also then wound up incredibly tight. So there's effectively three and a half tons of mass compression permanently in the boat. So this gives it tremendous uh, stiffness, performance, upwind capability. And some of the more practical features. This is our uh, fender locker here. There Fenders are over the side at the moment. They are currently. You can see the actual size of this thing. I'll even get in it. You know. So we've got our deck brushes, all our big fenders to protect the boat are in here. And uh, again, access to our black tank is, is there. You can see the black tank moulded into the hull there. But the pump out position here is on deck. This is uh, our V striker on our carbon spinnaker pole. We don't have the forward beam. Uh, we engineer the hulls to take the loads, mainly so we can drive the boat harder and we don't have the spray hitting the front beam. Also, if you drop it off a big wave, the beam is like a brake and can actually be dangerous. So if it's dangerous, we get rid of it. We don't, we don't like it. So, put the actual nets on if we've got to get to the very front of the boat. Uh, sometimes you have a little wrap-up or a problem that you might need to get out there. So. We're not uh, as young as we used to be, so we'll uh, have the little nets. And then uh, our synthetic rigging again, even the forestay, uh, is very, very light. Uh, hang on sail. All the sails are carbon north sails, so they're very high quality, 3DI. Um, very light again, and very stiff. So if you have a nice carbon stiff mast with carbon stiff sail. And the anchor locker. Up. And so we've got an uh, electric windlass in here, we've got a anchor and uh, 30 metres of chain roughly and um, about the same of, of rope as well. Uh, complete self-launching, self-sewing, uh, push button for the up and down. Uh, very, very simple, very clean and works very well. On board, does cap. 12.95. How tall are you, Daz? I am six foot three. Um, this is uh, the interior of the Daz Cat 12.95, and I'm in my favourite area, as you can see <laughs> uh, <laughs> the galley. Um, a very important part of the boat, as you've probably witnessed on a lot of our videos, we do seem to like uh, our food. So, when racing, why rough it? Let's be comfortable is our uh, view on it. So we've got a free burner gas hob, uh, basically all the cubs, plates, easy access right in front of you, held in there nicely. We've got the twin sinks, I've got a little pull out bin in there, and then we've got some frying pans and other storage in here, both sides. Again, all the water pumps, everything's accessible basically. And we've got some more lockers outboard. Uh, we've got a little hanging locker here, a few supplies to do the delivery back up. And then obviously in this section we've got our dagger board, but we do have a little stuff area behind here too. Aft is a, a cabin. So you can see it's pretty comfortable. In fact, they're very comfortable, and certainly without the engine underneath roaring away quite often. Uh, it's a very, very comfortable uh, place to be at sea back here, so we mirror the cabins both sides. We do have an escape hatch down here, which is uh, part of the regulations. Gives you a lovely little place to look out of, and a little ventilation hatch here. You get to the rudders, you take off the the headboard there and you've got easy access to rudders and pilot. Now we find that doors on boats tend to just rattle or not get used very often um, so we've actually got these very lightweight roll-up 
uh, doors, and they just zip in a little bit of privacy when you've got a, a large group on the boat. But quite often, it's just the two of you. Our fridge, which is a 130 litre fridge, is positioned at the end. Always been very good because there's no beer in it at all. Forward is a another double cabin. It's actually being used for a sail place at the moment, so you can't really see it very easily. But if you get down there, you can see the length of the area. Tascat owners do like to sail fast, so they tend to end up with a lot of sails. So quite often this uh, this area will be given over to the to the sails. Uh, unless you go sailing and then you get them out, put them in the cockpit or the dinghy. And then you have the water tank with the visual gauge here. Everything is super strong and super light. 12 volt charger right here as well to plug in your phones. And some lights, obviously. In here we have the chlorifier, the fuel tank. And the uh, the engine, the saloon, very spacious and again comfortable, good for keeping a, a lookout. Nice large table to socialise around, and then we have this headboard feature which has down lighters, and it has the RGB mood lighting that lights up around the outside. Ventilation hatches forward, and on the uh, top of the deck there as well. Saloon carbon door which locks on the handle and full standing headroom at six foot three. Yep, pretty good. On the other side, we have all of our electrical systems, and these are all kept up high out of the bilge, out of the bilge in case you had a flood. Um, they're all sealed away in here. We can actually gain an increase access by taking this entire panel out. And that's got all the chargers uh, and battery, lithium 100 amp hour battery in there, last of all, and Empire bus wiring. This is the, uh, the throne room, <laughs> <laughs> which is, uh, is perfect because quite often these places can get in a bit of a mess if people get seasick. So we can literally just pull out the shower and uh, hose everything down, or we can hang that up on the hook there once the door's shut. Which we do have a door here, which is a luxury item, I must say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, electric loos, days of hand flushing are kind of gone. Um, and then we've got some storage here, and we've got some access to our black tank behind here. Um, we've also got these uh, trowel plates. So these are banged down, so there's, you know, three and a half tons of load in here, you know, right now, without even going so Gain a second water tank with uh, your visual gauges and your clear hatch as well. So you can get in there and clean them out. There's nothing worse than nasty tanks. One of the other great features here is the heat dispatcher heating system also runs through to the heads compartment. So on the back of here, I'll just take the camera from Oriel. We've got our uh, oil skins hanging there so we can crack the hatch, put the heating on, and dry our gear out, even if it's raining outside. So, yes. What's in there? Uh, the just... heating system, okay. the diesel tank, and then the engine again. Second engine. So, this is again more storage. So this has got life jackets, some repair gear in there. Um, again, we, we kind of travel pretty minimal on these boats. We, we don't want to overload them. Although it has plenty of storage space and certainly huge volume. Look under here, we have a, yeah, that berth size is, is a massive. Suitcases and all the large items that you end up bringing onto the boat can disappear down into here. You get out what you need and uh, enjoy your sailing really. So one of the other nice features a lot of the owners are now fitted is the plotter in the owner's cabin. So basically, you know, you can lay in bed and uh, see what they're up to. 
quite often on Hissy Fit, you'll hear silent. What are you doing? <laughs> Head up. <laughs> and we got the charging. That's right. There's a little 12 volt charger sockets and a cigarette lighter there. More storage. And uh, obviously it's got an inverter charger on board, so we've got we've got 240 as well. So you we can run hoovers and cleaning equipment. Uh, the nav station. Again with the BNG, so actually we have what uh, four BNG screens on this boat, uh, two outside, one in the owner's cabin, and one and one here, and we have the electrical system, which has been developed specifically for the Dascat range of catamarans. It's a very durable, light, reliable system that works incredibly well. You can see here it's got it stating it's uh, the battery power. At the moment what we're using and it sets up a graph down here i've just turned it on so it's not there uh, to see how you're you know using the power and you can scroll through all your switches uh, with this button here if we go back go the other way and that's your fuse panel if things fuse then if they regularly fuse we can pick up on the service work and find the fault and cure it uh, saying that we've never had any real problems in five years operating these systems on our boats and every one of our boats has this system now. This is the uh, the mast that so you can see put on the mast head tricolour there. Turn that off. Pack in the cockpit. You know, for cruising we've got loads of space, for racing we've got clear access to everything. So, a twin wheel system, you can get up you can move around. The great thing about this wheel system is they're independent to each rudder, then connected with a tie bar. So if one set of cables went on a wheel, you simply go to the other wheel and take control of the boat. So independence, reliability, redundancy, strength, these are all the key aspects to the design on these boats. Uh, safety is always in mind because these are high performance boats, they sail really fast, so we've got watertight compartments, we've got crash bulkheads, we've got reserve buoyancy, we've got all the safety equipment. Yeah, we try and mitigate as much of the potential dangers while sailing. Even the overall design of the boat with the mast set further back than the normal uh, to allow us to drive the harder, you know, giving more hull projection in a way. Um, so that's all, all good. We've got the Bimini up here as well, which has got the solar panel on, uh, or solar panels, and that uh, keeps the batteries pretty much charged up the whole time. Um, you know, we leave the other boat on the mooring, we come back in the mor morning and maybe it's down 10 to, 10 to 15 percent running the fridge. Um, as soon as you've started the engines and gone off the dock, you're at 100% again. I came here this morning, we're at 100%, so the fridge was off. So. Um, I think for me, one of the, the, the biggest things, the biggest pluses of these boats is just sort of how easy they are to sail, really. They're, they've been quite a, an evolution over the course of sort of 10 or 15 boats that have all been fairly similar. And just the, the combination of sort of the helm position with all the, all the deck gear around you um, and the self-tacking jib and the stack pack on the main just mean that um, either for, for short-handed racing or for just family cruising, they are immensely easy to, to sail. And that's you know, more, more so than any other of the sort of um, catamarans that I've, uh, that I've sailed. Okay. Yeah, so the friction's been eliminated everywhere and it's just very easy. And some people look at the mat and say that they're not comfortable looking or luxurious. Do you have anything to say about that? Well, I mean, uh, I, I, you know, I think they're positively palatial. Um, <laughs> I've got a tiny little boat myself, so uh, the fact that you can sit very easily, sort of six of you around saloon table here, um, uh, it's it's very easy to, to cook stuff up in the galley, even when even when it's pretty rough. Um, yeah, that's been proved time and time again with your uh, amazing cooking skills um, and yours. And in terms of kind of general comfort, do you think there is anything lacking that somebody staying on board for more than a weekend might really miss? 
No, I, I don't think so. I mean, um, you know, I think I would, I, I would happily go to quite long-term cruising in something like this. I mean, it, it's, um, you know, you've got a, quite a lot of fridge capacity, um, although as a custom thing, it'd be very easy to, you know, increase that or put freezers in. You know, this particular one that's got a three burner sort of gas hob on it, which is great. Um, a, a lot of them have got microwaves as well. There's more than enough space to sort of cart around lots of toys with you. Um, you know, you could very easily have canoes and windsurfers and surfboards and stuff. Um, so in summary, you're saying it's a fast boat, it's high performance, it's easy to sail. I, I don't think it's not. It's not fancy in or glitzy in the way that some boat manufacturers sort of try and try to sort of go for um you know everything that we do on these boats is just is very very functional because lots of them are raced very hard um and do lots of miles um but even if you're cruising you want a functional boat you don't want to spend your whole time having to polish brass and well, no. Fixed headlinings that are falling off and that no, kind I mean, of. They are, they are, they're very, very strong, um, and very well put together, and um, they they really don't suffer from sort of um, you know lots of breakage years. Um, you, know, you can you can race and rally one of these things for sort of uh, a week, and then literally just normally just kind of put things to bed, and it's ready to go for the next week. Um, they're just they're, they're quite Tonka toy like um, pretty robust very robust uh, high performance easy to sail um, you know they're pretty much as fast as a sort of a class 40 um, and and yet you don't have to sort of kill yourself to achieve that performance okay brilliant thanks Matt